What's going on everyone? It's Adam here from No Shelf Space. I'm giving you a how to play for Archeo Society. This one from Space Cowboys for two to six players. It's for 12 plus and takes about an hour to play. I've set up most of the game here. We're just going to run it down really quickly. You're going to take your scoreboard, lay down on the table and choose a number of tokens equal to the players, whatever color they are. So I'm using gray and white. So I have a gray and white tracker for the scoreboard and then you lay out the six location tiles and for your first game they suggest using the red on the advanced side this would be the basic side for red we're going to play on the advanced side i'll show you what that means in a little bit but you're going to lay out the six location boards like this one two three four five six and place player markers on the first space of each board then you're going to find six decks. Now, this is the suggested starter deck for uh, the, your first game, but you can mix and match and do whatever you want. So we are playing with the Explorers, the Students, the Botanists, the Pilots, the Photographers, and the Doctors. For your first game, you're also going to need the Botany uh, bonus tile and depending on which cards you're using there may be other bonus tiles you're going to need to grab out of the box but for us we're going to need the botanist bonus tile and you're going to need to find the three monkey cards now the reason why the three monkey cards are important is because each season and in a two to three player game you're going to play two seasons and a, and a four to six player game you're going to play three seasons but once all three monkeys are revealed the season ends now you'll be shuffling the monkeys into the bottom half of the deck so this is not going to be a very good shuffle because um, I'm not going to sit here and shuffle for 10 minutes. But you take all the cards that you're going to be using for the game and you put them into a deck and you give them a good shuffle. And it's important that you do your best because they are um, they are in order when you put them back in the box for storage purposes. So you got to make sure that you give these a nice shuffle uh, before you start the game. After you've shuffled the deck... You're going to deal one card to each player. We have a two-player game, so we're going to deal... Uh, I'm going to deal one card here, and I'm going to move the rule book. We're going to deal one card there. Each player is going to get a card. For the sake of this video, we're going to play face up, but normally you would keep things hidden away. So there we go. Then you're going to roughly split your deck in half as best as you can. You can count them if you really care, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. You're going to insert the three monkeys into the bottom... Oops, I put the wrong way. I most definitely did. You're going to insert the three monkeys into the bottom half of the deck. Like so. You're going to give that a shuffle. And put that on the bottom. We're going to put this up here. We're going to put that on the bottom and put the rest of the deck on top. You also need to deal out cards. And now for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to move my second player right down here. And you're going to lay out cards equal to the number of players, and they're all upside down, equal to the number of players plus two. And apparently, I did a really bad job shuffling because we have one, two, three explorers in the deck. And then these just go back on top. You can do two things on your turn, depending on who the start player is. You can either draw one card or you can play an expedition. To draw a card, you can either draw one off the top of the deck or you can pick one up from the face-up display. If you were to take a card from the face-up display, so I have a pilot here, maybe I'll grab, uh, oh, I don't know, I'll grab a second pilot and add it to my hand. You do not refill the display. The display is never refilled by any kind of regular uh, action, like when you draw a card or at the end of your turn. That's never how it works. I'm gonna show you how it works in a quick second, but let's say, on our turn, our first selection is we are going to take the red pilot. So now we're going to move over here to our second player. He also has a red pilot. He's going to look at the deck. And to show you how this game works, he's going to select the red explorer like that. Now it comes back to me. I have a couple options now. I now have enough cards. I mean, you could play a one card explorer. You probably won't. But I have enough cards now to actually play an expedition. An expedition means you're going to be playing cards from your hand that either match in symbol, which I have here, or match color, which my opponent has here. So let's say I'm going to play a symbol expedition of two cards. So I play these two cards face up in front of me, just like this. The reason why you play them face up is because at the end of the round, they are going to be worth points 
equal to the center chart. So this two, uh, two card expedition is going to give me one point at the end of the game or at the end of the season. So there we go. I played this expedition. So what does that mean? Well, two things. Whoever your leader is will have a color, and that is the color of the track that you're going to move up. So had I played it this way, the leader of my expedition was this gold slash brown pilot. And this is a bad example, but in most circumstances, that means I can move up the gold track, which is right which is right down here. I can move up this track right here. So I'd be able to take my Jeep. As you can see here, there's a card value. Your expedition has to be at least this many cards for you to go from here to here. And actually, I don't want to use that side. So I'm going to come to this side. You need at least one card expedition to go from this space to this space. And as you can see, there are points to be earned at the end of each season at the bottom as well. So I could do that. I could do that. I could take my gray Jeep, go there, and leave these cards in front of me. Alternatively, of course, I could make the red pilot my leader, and instead, I could move up here on this track way up here. Now, this is the special track, and I'll show you why. This is an advance, so this is the basic side of the board. We're using the basics for all the other boards except for this one. This is the advance side. As you can see, there's a little hand here with a draw sign. In this situation, anytime you cross over. So I had a two card expedition, so I can move from here to here. You can only ever move one space. So even if I played a three card expedition, I could not go here. You can only move one space per turn. So I can move from one to here because I had two cards and I get to draw. What on this board, it means I can draw as many cards from the deck as indicated on the little hand here. And as you can see, the hand says one. So I would be able to draw one card from the deck. And I'm actually gonna do that because there's another re another thing you're gonna see a little bit later for why that matters. So I'm gonna move up on the red track. I'm gonna do this and I get to draw a card because of that bonus and put it in my hand. So I'm, this is my hand, this is my expedition. Now the reason why I said the pilots, so now my turn's over. The reason why I said the pilots is a bad example is because a pilot card actually has an ability. Now every single type of adventure, explorer, whatever you're gonna call them has an ability. This ability means when he is your leader or she is your leader, when the pilot is your leader, you can actually choose to go up any track. It's kind of like a wild. So I didn't have to pick red with this player. I could have gone up the blue track instead. Uh, it wouldn't have been a good move strategically, but I could have. So the same thing here, there's two red cards, but I could opt to move up any track I wanted. I could move up, this player could move up this track because it's only a one here. So they could take their submarine and move to there. This one here though, this was a, a set of the same type. This is a set of the same colors. And so if I'm gonna play this, um, this is a color set. So I must go up the red track because my expedition leader is a red card. So I'm honestly gonna be moving there and I'm going to be drawing a card from the deck just like our first player did. So there we go. He's also got a card in his hand. And again, we're gonna see why that's important later. The thing here is that this is also a different power, and I'll explain all the powers in this deck at the end of the video, but this one allows me to go up a on a track for one less card. So if I was already, if I was already here and we're further into the game, oops, if I'm already there and we're further into the game and I played this, I can move up a track for one less. So this is a bad example because this requires two. So let's pretend we're here. So this requires two, I only have three cards, but because the Explorer is my lead on the expedition, I can actually advance for one less card. So instead of three, I only need two and I could advance. It's that easy, very cool. All right, so this is a set played. So this will go face up in front of them and this is their deck and we'll keep going. Now let's say later in the game, we've both drawn a couple more cards. I'm just gonna give some random cards to each player and we're this far into the game. So it's this player's turn. And so they're looking at their cards and they're like, man, what should we do? What should we do? They decide, all right, I could keep drawing cards. And in fact, they say, you know what? I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to draw this pink card. That's going to be nice because they need three to go up on the pink track. So their turn is over. This player looks at their hand. That's not very good. They don't like what they say. They've got a couple pilots, but they don't love it. So they're going to draw a card from the top of the deck. They drew a pilot, that's very nice. And so now they have three pilots, that's a set of pilots. You can only have 10 cards in your hand. And if you have 10, you cannot draw 
more cards. You must play an expedition. We're going to go back to this player. They've now got these three pink, and they're going to play those three pink. And this is where the filling the face-up cards is going to come in. So I have these three cards, and I decide, you know what? I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one I'm going to use because I don't need the negative one because, as you can see here, to go up on this track right here requires three cards. I have three cards, so I don't need the negative one. And I want to go up on the pink track. So having a wild pilot doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go there. And so I play this expedition in front of me because that's going to be worth points. But now you have to discard all the leftover cards in your hand to the face up supply. So you'll have nothing in your hand. There is a doctor card, which we'll talk about right now. This is the doctor. The doctor lets you keep cards in your hand equal to the size of your expedition. So if I had a doctor as my leader on this pink expedition, which I don't, but if I did, and let's say this is pink, it's not, but let's say it is. If this was pink, I would have a four card expedition. So the two cards I put down, I could keep in my hand because I have a four card expedition. I could keep up to four cards in my hand without discarding them. I didn't, I didn't have that. So I must discard. And the same thing would happen here. If this, oh, this doctor was here. If this person played a three card, this three card, these three pilots, they can go up on any track, remember? So let's say for three, they're also gonna go up on pink because it requires three right away. That's pretty high. But they now have to discard both of these cards. And so those go up in the face-up display. And now I can choose from them or I can choose from the top of the deck. If these are ever all gone, all the cards are gone, you will instead choose to take two from the top of the deck and put them in your hand. But at some point, people are going to play a set and there's going to be more cards in the face-up display. You are going to do that until all three monkeys are revealed. And when the third monkey gets revealed, so this would have been at the bottom. When the third monkey gets revealed, the season's over and you're going to score points. You are going to score points for how far you are on all of the tracks. You're going to score points for all of the expeditions you created that turn. When that's all done, everything, every single card will go back into the stack and you'll play the game essentially two more times. You don't move any of the pieces on the board, but you do lose all the expeditions you played that season. Now, I did say we would run through the six characters available in the first set of the game, and I'm going to do that right now. So we already talked about this. This is the Explorer. You can go up on a track for one less card. The pilot acts as a wild, so if he's the lead on your expedition, you can play on any or you can move up on any track, again, as long as you have the required cards to make the necessary move. The doctor allows you to keep cards in your hand equal to the size of your expedition. And then as a reminder, when you play an expedition, you must discard all the other cards in your hand. If you have the doctor, you can save cards from discarding uh, equal to the size of the expedition. We're going to keep going here. And I don't know how long it's going to be because I did a poor job shuffling. This is the student. The student actually does not allow you to move up on a track. However, there are double the amount of students as other sets in the game, which if you can get six students, which is very likely, you're going to score 12 points if you can play six students. You can't move up on a track, but there are tons and tons of students in the deck. It's a good way to score points on that track. The photographer makes your sets worth one more card. So if you played a photographer, if you had this right here, this is a three card set of photographers because you have a photographer as your lead. It's actually a four card set when it comes to scoring. It's not a four card set when it comes to moving up tracks, but it is a four card set when it comes to scoring at the end of the season. What else do we have? We might have done them all. We might have done them all. We talked about the doctor. Here, we're just going through the cards. You can see all the different colors here. We talked about the doctor. I think we haven't talked about the botanist. I think that's the last one we got to talk about. It is the last one we have to talk about. And apparently they were all at the top of the deck, technically. This is the botanist. When the botanist is the leader, you're actually going to take this little botanist token. And what that does is that gives you instantly two points. And then if you have the botanist token at the end of the season... You're going to get an additional two points and you can keep it. You can give it to yourself. So if I played a one card, if I played a one card expedition just because I wanted this and I wanted two points, if down the road I played a two card expedition with botanists, I could take it away from myself 
and give myself two more points. So the botanist can rack you up points if you play it wisely. Um, and, and it's a lot of fun. Again, there are way more stuff in the box. And I'm not going to run down what everything in here does, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six more different cards in the box. And again, there's tokens for those cards and so much more, but I'll let you explore that on your own. Guys, thank you so much for watching this how to play video for Archeo Society. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and a like. I've not done a lot of Let's Play, so if there's something I can improve, please let me know. I would love to make improvements for you. But until next time, folks, thanks for watching and we'll talk again soon. Goodbye.